Hey, how you doing? You know, boudoir photography might be one of the most difficult to prepare for, and not just for you, but for your client or your model. Now, I've got the standard tip sheet uh, that my clients get as soon as a session's booked, and uh, it really helps them to prepare for the shoot, which helps me produce better pictures, and consequently, they're just happier with the pictures. So it's a good idea to get your clients or your model prepared for her shoot in advance. All right, so let's go over the advice that I give them in my tip sheet, and hopefully you can use some of these to come up with your own tip sheet uh, that you can give to your clients. All right, let's start off with age verification. Now, in my tip sheet, I say, uh, please bring a valid ID, and that usually means a driver's license. When it comes to revealing pictures, you're not going to want to take pictures of people who are under age. Make sure that they bring their ID along with them. It's got to be valid, and uh, take a photo of that ID, even with your iPhone. Uh, usually, Dieter takes care of the paperwork when a model or a client comes over, and she'll just get a shot of that photo ID and have them sign a model release if that's something we're doing. In my tip sheet, I also talk about beauty makeovers. Now, uh, it's great if someone comes prepared with, uh, they've just had their nails done and uh, definitely hair and makeup. But what I advise against is trying like, you know, some kind of new facial peel or something like that that might irritate their skin like right, you know, a couple of days before their shoot. We don't want them to do that. I also tell them to please avoid tanning before the shoot because, uh, you know, nothing looks worse than tan lines and we don't want anything to adversely affect the look of the skin. Everyone looks better after after getting a proper night's rest and uh, most people look better if they're properly hydrated right it just makes the skin and complexion look better another good piece of advice come to the studio sober all right um, it, you know everyone wants to feel relaxed and confident for their photo shoot but I'm telling you uh, somebody shows up drunk it's really hard to get them to look good on camera. Uh, you, in order to do this kind of photography, in order to be a good model for this kind of photography, you've got to be able to take direction. And uh, if, if you look a little weird, uh, if you look a little sleepy or draggy or, you know, just basically drunk, it's not going to look right. So, yeah, I want them to come to the studio sober. Now, I know that a lot of you, uh, if you do this kind of uh, work, I know a lot of you, uh, you know, provide your clients with a little glass of wine, maybe some champagne to kind of loosen them up. That's okay if that's what you want to do. I don't do it that way. I really, you know, for me, it's not so much about pampering. It's not so much about the experience of the boudoir photo shoot. It's more about work. It's more about the clients working or the models working and I'm working. So we're working to create some awesome pictures. Everybody needs to be focused. I also tell clients and models, if possible, uh, avoid tight-fitting clothing um, or straps or things with elastic, if at all possible, uh, on your way to the photo shoot because it takes time for these little skin indentations created by these straps and elastic bands and stuff like that. It takes time for these skin indentations to kind of work their way out. Uh, you know, if you start shooting and you've got these little strap marks, um, you're going to have a lot of Photoshop to do. You don't want to do that. So yeah, if they can come in loose fitting clothing on their way to the shoot, that's really going to help a lot. Speaking of uh, what to do on the way to the photo shoot, it's a good idea to give yourself plenty of time. Tell, tell your client or your model, you know, give yourself plenty of time to get here. Plenty of time to uh, do your hair and makeup. Uh, you don't want to rush around. You start feeling frantic. You start feeling anxious. You're nervous right before the shoot. You know, I've had clients come over and it takes a good 15 or 20 minutes just to calm them down if they're a little late because they've been worried about getting there late. Okay, and speaking of hair and makeup, let's talk about makeup. You know, for our style of boudoir, it's usually more of a dramatic look, uh, uh, false eyelashes, dramatic makeup, you know, something sultry. Uh, a, a professional makeup artist is going to help your client or your model, uh, you know, get that look if she can't produce it herself. And, you know, a lot of people think that they can do their own makeup and that they're really good at it but you know more often than not that's not really the case you know it's good enough for everyday stuff but for a photo shoot I really recommend and you should recommend uh, to your client or your model to uh, get 
the makeup done professionally. You know, it's just going to make everything a lot better on you and them and the pictures are just going to look, you know, a lot better if uh, the, the makeup's done by a professional. What you can do is you can have a list of professionals that you trust that you've worked with on hand so that uh, if she wants to go and do that before the shoot, then she knows where to go. If there's a makeup person that she knows that she wants to work with that person, I mean, fingers crossed that they can do a good job. Uh, otherwise, uh, make sure that she brings along a little uh, makeup kit for touch-ups. Now, a lot of people have a makeup artist or bring in a makeup artist for a shoot. That's also a really good idea, but it's going to cut into uh, the time. And, uh, you know, honestly, I don't really want someone uh, getting their makeup done for an hour and a half or two hours while I stand around uh, with a camera uh, before I get any of my work done. I, I really like it if they show up with this work already done. Now let's talk about hair. Uh, again, we want a style that goes a little bit beyond the everyday look. Uh, so we want volume and style for, you know, just a sultry look. All right, and those are the, really the most important tips. I've got a couple of other ones. Uh, and, you know, you should really think about, like, a, as you go along and you develop your own shooting style and your own workflow for shoots like this, uh, you're going to find little things that you wish were done a little differently. Maybe you would have given some advice uh, to your client or model before she showed up. Just write those down. Make sure that you include those on your own tip sheet. Uh, but here are my final ones. Uh, I usually uh, ask them to wear clear deodorant. Nobody likes that gunky white stuff uh, under the arms. And trust me, you're going to have a lot of underarms showing in your photos. Uh, and speaking of that, I tell them to, you know, make sure that you've got that personal grooming thing. And I, you're going to have to word that in your own way. Uh, but I just like to say, uh, you know, that stubble can really ruin the look of smooth skin. So prepare accordingly. Um, so that's the, you know, the personal grooming aspect of it. And finally, I think this is where a lot of people really get stuck and this is what they really are nervous about when it comes to getting photographs taken. Now, especially people who don't spend a lot of time in front of the camera. So your average client who just wants to look beautiful for her pictures, she's not going to really know how to pose. Uh, she's initially, she's going to be uncomfortable in front of the camera. You might get that deer cotton headlights look. Uh, nobody wants that. So one good way to have them prepare so that that doesn't happen uh, is to get them uh, on their own to look online, look at different boudoir pictures, uh, look at magazines, uh, look at sultry, sexy pictures, and have them um, just on their own copy the looks and the expressions and some of the poses. That way she can practice some of those looks in front of the mirror, get comfortable with them. Maybe a little muscle memory will take over by the time she's in front of the camera. In any event, it'll give her a little more confidence when she sees herself in the mirror being able to uh, reproduce some of these expressions and poses. She can just kind of repeat those during the photo shoot. You're going to give her some tips. You're going to tweak those poses and give her a little more direction uh, with regard to those expressions and those sultry looks. So that little bit of extra confidence and that expertise that you're going to bring to the table, uh, you guys are going to be able to create some beautiful boudoir style pictures. So those are my tips for a boudoir pre-session tips and info sheet that you can give to your client or model before she comes over. And really, I suggest that you uh, give this sheet to her uh, several days before the session. If you give them plenty of time, then they'll know, you know, it might not be a good idea to go to a spa and get some kind of a facial uh, or skin treatment that might adversely affect the look of their skin. They're also going to want to make sure that they get their uh, makeup and hair appointments all set up and ready to go and give themselves plenty of time uh, between those and the time it is to show up at the studio uh, so that there's no rushing. So yeah, hopefully you can use some of these tips and add some of your own to put together your your own boudoir pre-session tips and info sheet. This is going to help your client or model be more prepared and more confident for your boudoir photo shoot. All right, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe and leave me a comment or a suggestion for a tip someone might want to add to their tip sheet. That's it for today. See you next time.